This is a DJI mic and it's basically a pair of reverse AirPods. Welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about tech that makes my life easier. It might not be relevant to everyone because a lot of it is going to be video production related but maybe you could learn something. This is the DJI mic and I call them a pair of reverse AirPods because they're as seamless and easy to use as a pair of AirPods but instead of playing sound, they record it. But more than that, it is just super useful of a tool for me as a video content creator. It's a wireless lavalier mic system and I know that's not going to be relevant for everyone but it is a very versatile functional tool in many ways so let's talk about it. Starting off with the audio quality. Now, I don't think it's particularly amazing or earth shattering. It sounds as good as a wireless lavalier system should with its built-in mics into its transmitters but it sounds definitely quite clear and for my very low pitch voice it records the bass respectively well which is very important to me. You can also plug in a lavalier microphone into the transmitter itself if you don't think that it is good enough or you can plug in any 3.5 millimeter line out mic into the transmitter itself so you can actually technically record anything from a computer's line output to a phone's music output. Many fancy different things anything with a 3.5 millimeter line out which is is extremely convenient. Another thing about this device that I really like is just how seamless and efficient and easy to use it is. Pull it out of its charging case which is included that also protects the device that opens up like an air pair of airports which is awesome and it just connects to each other seamlessly, quickly, efficiently. It turns on by itself, turns off by itself. Very, very, very good which is important. Now the receiver that you connect to your camera or your phone is also an impressive bit of kit. There's a nice OLED display on the front that's a touchscreen allowing for quick setting changes and it allows you to change a lot of settings from the individual gain levels of each transmitter to the output volume of the receiver. The DJI mic has a lot of functionality built in but more than that you don't even have to rely on any sort of external recording or outputting to any device because it actually record audio directly to the DJI mic itself. It has a built-in storage that can store up to like 15 plus hours of audio recording so if I need a fail-safe backup for a shoot that I cannot mess up and won't be able to have another takeoff then I can actually record a second track to the DJI mic itself and then transfer it to my computer via USB-C later on which is super duper convenient. Not to mention how compatible it is with so many devices. You have a little clip-on thing that allows you to either slide it into the hot shoe of a camera or you can plug into your USB-C phone or a lightning equipped iOS phone no problem and if you need a headphone jack because your camera or phone does not allow you to monitor the audio of what you're recording obviously phones don't have that feature there is a headphone jack so you can monitor it so not just have it line up to your camera it's very 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 versatile oh and the transmitters they have really like hefty clips that allow you to clip it anywhere but more than that it has magnets that come attached to it so you can kind of just use magnets to snap it in place if you can't clip it to whatever you're wearing which is sick or you can just use the magnets to like stick it on the fridge for some reason I don't know why you want to do that but magnets are awesome okay so I love the DJI mic it's really Really good and the battery life is pretty darn awesome as well. Good job DJI, really like this product. Now disclaimer, obviously they did send me this product and I get to keep it but I'm saying this genuinely because I enjoy using this so far although all honesty apparently it has some interference issues once you go to a very long distance away even though it technically has 250 meters of range wide open. Like it apparently gets kind of interference issues really quick if you get something in between it though I was unable to test this but there are reports about that so be aware. For people who are just doing interviews, talking head stuff, seated stuff in front of the camera. This is no issue at all. But if you're shooting things where the subject is moving around and kind of flying everywhere, then that interference issue might be a bit of a problem. So before buying this, if you are like a professional videographer with like clients that you cannot, cannot risk ruining the project off, make sure you rent it, test it out. Because I'm not sure whether the interference issue is going to be a big deal for your needs. For me, no problem at all. I absolutely love it. It makes my life a whole lot better. As for the next thing that we're talking about, it's going to be something that viewers on this channel are not going to like that much. It's this. This is the Apple MacBook Pro 16 inch, but we're not talking about this laptop in particular. We're talking about the M1 chip inside it. Now, I will have a full on video about the whole experience switching from Windows to Mac and especially this M1 MacBook Pro 16 inch, which has become my daily driver now. But hear me out on why the M1 chip is so impressive. It's not about the pure power because let's be honest, there are more powerful Windows laptops and PCs than the M1 chips. But it's about the efficiency. The efficiency of the M1 chip makes life so much easier for people who need a portable device because its efficiency means thinner laptops that have smaller batteries that still last as long. It means less heat, less fan noise, which means you can put it on your lap, no problem, no worries about ventilation. You can put it anywhere, bring it anywhere. It also means more power efficiency, which means even when it's not plugged in, it's able to operate at 100% capacity and still last for hours and end, no problem, which is something that cannot be said about your RTX 30 
3080 or RTX 3090 laptops. This is impressive. I can video edit on this M1 chip, 4K footage, 120 FPS, 10-bit color grade, not plugged in, and still work on it four, five, six hours. No problem at all. You can't do that on a Windows laptop with an x86 chip. It's not possible. And not only is it efficient, it's also still very competitively powerful, especially with how well optimized macOS and Rosetta 2 really is. Very seamless, very smooth, power saving, and yet powerful device. That's what I love about the M1 chip and it just makes my life easier. If you're doing some kind of work that needs portability and your work is compatible with macOS, I genuinely think it might make your life better. You have to switch to macOS, which is an inferior software, that, that one I agree, but uh, in terms of like performance and optimization and efficiency and freedom and portability that the M1 chip brings, this thing has made my life a lot easier. I've been able to go out more because it means I can bring my work with me. I've been able to you know, save time because if I'm like in the back of a taxi or a bus, I can still work. Can't do that with a Windows laptop as well, especially if you're doing like a power hungry task. And finally, the last most important piece of technology that makes my life so, so, so much better is Apple's cleaning cloth that cost me 20 US dollars to import. Kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't buy that. It's, ter it's pointless. Just get a microfiber cloth. It's, there's really nothing special about it. It's just a flex. No, seriously though, the last piece of tech that actually makes my life a whole lot better is my Kindle. I bought it recently, it's a Kindle Paperwhite, and it's made my life better mainly because it's helped me read a lot more. Now, reading is very important in improving. Even though we have technologies and screens and YouTube videos now, reading helps a lot in many ways. It helps you focus more because you're trying to focus on words and you're imagining things. It helps you learn a lot more and improve as a person because through stories and text, you can learn and improve on yourself. And reading is just an enjoyable way to de-stress and calm down, which is good. But the reason the Kindle is so helpful it's not only that it makes me read more, it helps me read more instead of doing more harmful things. So for example, phone use. I am absolutely a phone addict, which is kind of what happens when you do social media as your job. Well, I'm trying to make it my job. You use your phone a lot, and there is that phone addiction there that happens. But the thing about the Kindle is that it substitutes it with reading, but not only does it substitute your phone use with reading, it kind of fulfills the craving of phone use. Because you're holding a tablet, you're holding a digital device, that's swiping, that's touching. It matches the experience of using a phone, but because you can only read on it, you end up reading instead of like rolling mindlessly through TikTok or Instagram, which is really practical and you know makes your time spent a lot more efficiently and a mo lot more logically. Another thing is that the Kindle does not have blue light, right? The Kindle paper light does not have as much blue light as a OLED or LCD display. So using it before you sleep is a very good way to improve the quality of your sleep, making you a better, more restful person, which I think is very important in operating well in this complicated life we live in. Using a Kindle before I sleep not only satisfies the craving of using a phone before I sleep, but also helps me detach from blue light before I sleep, which improves my sleep quality. Just flip a couple of pages for like 10-15 minutes before I sleep and I end up having a better sleep. I end up being able to read longer text for longer. I end up being able to focus for longer and I end up being, in my opinion, a better person. Now I sound like those pretentious people who say books are so much better, but it's true. Books are really powerful and uh, using technology to make sure that I do books, you know, do books, I make it sound like drugs, but to make using technology to help me, who is someone that has like problems getting into a book, get into it easier, I think it just makes my life better. So, and finally, that leads me to the last point of this video, a moral lesson. And this is important because I know a lot of my viewers are actually quite young. My demographics show that like 30, 40% are under 18. That's a lot. And for you kids, you're kind of developing. And I, I am a kid too. But as I grow older and more self-aware, it's something that I've noticed that I want to share. And that is that technology is unbelievably powerful, but it's also both good and bad at the same time. Shown in this video, technology can be great at making your life better. But technology can also be very, very bad and make your life a whole lot worse because it's got that power to change your life. It is important and I implore all you young kids to identify the technology that makes you a better person, that makes your life a better thing to live in and keep that and focus on that while removing the technology that is bad for you. For example, if you find yourself scrolling social media all day long and feeling bad because you see people's life who are better than you, cut that social media out of your life. For example, if you are 
Finding that your attention span is struggling and you can't focus on a page of text might be because certain games or certain apps or certain softwares end up hurting your attention span by making you so used to constant fast pace activity that you just can't focus on slower, more methodical things like reading a page of text. By being aware, taking a step back and identifying the technology that runs our lives, we then take back control from technology. We need to control the technology that helps us and make sure it keeps helping us and not allow the technology to overrun us and control us instead. Because when that happens, some bad technology or bad app or bad software or bad thing might come along and hurt you, right? By always being aware of what you're exposed to, by always being aware of what you are using, of always being aware of what you're doing with your technology, you are able to make sure that you are aware and that you are in control of the ones and zeros that your devices run on you. And that's important because more and more I see people struggling with focus like I have done in the past. More and more I see people struggling with mental health which is unbelievably affected to how technology has affected our sleep and how we interact socially. Don't try to argue with me on this. There's countless studies that agree with me on this. As a tech reviewer, I'm aware because I'm always thinking about technology. But if you're just a consumer, you might not be. So if you are, if you haven't really thought about like, oh man, I've been using this a lot. I've been using this software too much. Or how has this software been affecting me? You know, if you have not thought like this, please and just figure out how it's been controlling your life and take that control back for yourself. Technologies are just products, and technically we're supposed to be choosing the products that we use. Unfortunately though, more and more, it seems like a lot of people end up just being chosen by the product instead of the other way around. Time to take that control back. Time, it's time to make every choice you make with your technology, with your apps, and what you expose yourself to be a conscious, active choice to protect yourself and improve yourself. Because if it isn't, you are letting a computer, a one and zero, run you and something unknown is controlling you and running you, who knows where it will take you. Chances are not somewhere good. So use technology to make your life better. I hope that little rant was impactful somewhat to some of you and some of you guys like learned something. Uh, but yeah, I know we started this video with reverse AirPods but it, and it ended up with this rant, but you know. I'll see you guys around. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe. I've been working to improve my quality and my thumbnails so far. So if you think I'm doing a good job, please tell me. I would love to know. See you guys around. Bye.